like to show you that I'm not too proud of this part of my garden. I have uh, squashes that were thriving along with multiple, multiple sunflowers. And so what happened was I didn't water it for a couple days. The temperature was around 70s and then suddenly we had a few days where it reached over 90 degrees and uh, in my mind I just forgot that I just thought it would just be warm but I didn't think that it would be too hot for the squash and so this whole patch is dried out and then we have this patch that's kind of surviving and it's making its way um, across my yard trying to thrive and I harvested some cilantro some seeds are still there and some scraggly plants are still here and my sunflower heads are being eaten from squirrels all over so there's one there's another there's another and so what happens is I try to I picked out a really big huge sunflower and I harvest it before the squirrels could get it I put it in a paper bag and I set it aside and lo and behold one day in the middle of the day it managed to sniff out that sunflower head in a paper bag and it just tore through the paper bag and started eating away at my sunflower head and it got through about halfway so I managed to save the other half of the sunflower head, head for the seeds so I'm quite upset about that um, but I'm also grateful I got part of it still and so I'm going to be harvesting some of these um, pumpkins way over here. And then I have this one that's green. And it looks like it was a cross between a pumpkin and a butternut squash. So that's interesting. Um, which we grew both last year. But because they're in the same patch and I, they volunteered, I just kept them there. So it, I didn't do too much work for that. Here's a hammy melon. Um, so I'm just going to let that stay here. But I think I'm, I'm going to be doing some changes over there in the yard. This area, I have some weeds over there I'm going to pull out. I have some volunteer carrots. Um, some things that have fallen over, like this sunflower here. And here is my uh, amaranth. So the other day when I was in the other part of the yard and I was talking about the Shasta daisy, I couldn't tell what the plant was that was growing near it. And um, I said, I suspected that it was um, a uh, amaranth, but I wasn't sure. And then I came over here to look at this because I know this is amaranth. And the leaves are the same. They're like this, I don't know what what you call this type of um, shape but all the lines on the leaves go like that and they have this telltale um, seed um, the way that it sits like this it grows like this and in some varieties this is much bigger but this this part is where the seeds are and it's full of protein and um, sometimes I'll harvest this and eat it like a like a spinach 
or I'll boil it and make a, a sauce like a, a warm um, salad. Um, well, it doesn't. It's not warm by the time. I, it's just warm when I boil it, and um, it's a great salad to eat. Or sometimes I'll just cut out some of it and throw it into the chicken run. And but this because of this. Um, a lot of times the seeds will just disperse throughout the yard and it'll just grow randomly here and there and I really don't mind it. To me it's not considered invasive. They're really easy to pull out. I mean they have just one stem at the bottom and you just pull it out of the ground. And I did that over here. There was another patch of amaranth and I pulled that out and gave it to the chickens. And it's just looking very messy back here really wild um so my hollyhock grew really tall and um it the wind blew we had some heavy winds and it just fell over so and that's my experiment there i have yet to check it i haven't been watering it because um plumeria love to be in um they love dry conditions like cacti and if if you ever think that they need water they don't because if they get at all waterlogged or wet feet they will start to shrivel and rot at the bottom so I try to leave it alone like a cactus um, and then uh, I have one more thing to show you 